It's all a scam. Halliburton was charging $45 for a seats pack can of like Coke or Pepsi that they give us and the military free in the mess hall. Now these sodas were made right there in the desert. It's not as if they were brought over from the United States. These sodas were made with Arabic wraps, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, whatever, right there in the desert. So it's not as if they had an exorbitant transportation rate. They had the, the little mobile units that we had to put our clothes in like a net duffel bag. Halliburton charged the government $100 for every bag of clothes they washed. Whenever we got our laundry back, it felt worse than when we turned it in. Everything was still grimy. I stopped taking my laundry into KBR, and instead, I was washing it in the sink. And I was told by my chain of command that I was not allowed to wash my laundry on my own. I had to take it to KBR to have it washed, even though we all knew that they were doing a horrible job because they get $99 a bag for a bag of laundry that I could do at home for $3 a legal way of stealing from the government or taxpayers' money. The Pentagon audit released last night that found the company is overcharging taxpayers. Halliburton Company billed taxpayers for its contract work in Iraq. It is your money that's being used. These contracts are managed under a system called Cost Plus, which is the opposite of trying to save money. It guarantees that everything that you buy will be paid back and reimbursed if it's seen as justified, and you'll be given a profit in addition. A cost plus arrangement the critics say leaves little incentive to save. The more taxpayer dollars Halliburton spends, the more Halliburton makes. Cost plus encourages you to run up the cost of a program because you are gonna get a percentage of the, the end result. And so there's no incentive to stay at Motel 6. Stay at the Ritz Carlton uh, in Qatar, folks. The place that they chose for orientation in Kuwait was a huge resort set right on the ocean. Had, I think, three swimming pools. So it was better than the Wyndham in Texas or the Ritz. It was fancied up. Marble floors, mahogany woodwork. It was just beautiful. They had sea dews, jet skis they could use. You could go and rent wave runners and go out and play in the water. We were renting wave runners, and we got paid by the hour to do it. I was told this, don't question it, enjoy it. Several government agencies are currently investigating if Halliburton overcharged for work already completed in Iraq. They had five-star meals catered in every day. It was so lavish. Rows of vegetable platters, beef platters, fish platters. It's a cost plus contract. KBR looked at it, the more money we spend, that's more money we get in our pockets. We had it made over there compared to the military. I mean, those guys were living in tents, and we had air-conditioned private hooches. The tents that we were staying in were completely moldy, and everybody was getting sick with respiratory infections. They're getting paid millions of dollars. Why can't they even give us a tent that doesn't make us sick to live in it? The soldiers are sleeping on these little cots out in the middle of the desert. Why these KBR executives are driving these $40,000 vehicles. They and their secretaries are driving at least a thirty dollars to $40,000 vehicle. This secretary lives in this complex, eats her meals in this complex, has her laundry delivered to her, has no reason to go anywhere at any time, but has a brand new top of the line Ford or Chevy pickup with everything imaginable on it that you could put on it chrome rims and leather interior and CD players and all these extra amenities that, you know, you don't really need in wartime. Why do they need an H-2 Hummer? Why do they have Cadillac Escalades in Iraq for Halliburton managers? What is the purpose? One invoice that I saw was for about $7,000 for one month for a SUV on a lease. It was a three-year contract comes up to uh, roughly $250,000. A vehicle that you and I could purchase at the local dealership for probably top of the line $45,000. And the taxpayer paid $250,000 and never did own the vehicle. They got the wrong equipment, ordered the wrong stuff. Computers still in boxes, new vehicles, 
they'd push them out in what they called burn pits. And they just set it on fire, claim it as a loss, get more money for the right equipment or the right stuff they needed. Why would you need to order somebody else's wrong equipment just because somebody pays you to do it? And you burn it and destroy it. You got brand new trucks over there and there's not even oil filters. So when the motor blows, what do you do? Buy a new truck and build the government. $75,000 truck, they wouldn't even have a spare tire to fit it. And we had to blow it up. And they didn't care how the burden did because the government's paying for it. We knew that every day that a vehicle broke down, we would have to destroy it. And these are maybe $80,000 vehicles, maybe $100,000, you know, they're expensive trucks. We're burning fuel in front of Iraqi people. We're not really doing anything to help and we just have to follow the orders. As a truck driver in the mail department, they'd send me to these camps with one bag of mail. That's risking my life just to deliver one bag of mail. Escort entire convoys where every flatbed truck was empty. The allegations come from 12 truckers complaining that the company was wasting government money by running empty trucks on the convoys and billing the government for them. It seems senseless to travel up and down the road and taking a chance of losing your life when there wasn't no purpose in it. When you went up empty and you come back empty. The allegation I went to make a better life for my family. I always have a roof over their head and not have to worry about where their next meal's coming from. Because it wasn't that fun with him gone. We missed him and all that stuff. I couldn't do stuff with him. Didn't have anybody to throw a baseball with, did you? You had to go take your fishing. Your mom was scared you'd fall in and get drowned, wouldn't she? Yeah. I went over there and I got my health messed up and got shot, bricked, knocked out, and everything else. I felt like not only I can make a decent living for my family and better myself, but I'll be doing something for my country, you know what I'm saying? I'm supplying the military and these guys where they can eat and help fight when we have to. But then, you know, you're looking and you're going up and down the road empty. Halliburton's charging the government for every camp they go by. And your buddy's getting killed for, un, for no cause at all. Not even as much as a Band-Aid on the truck. That's how Halliburton was making their killing and making their money is a legal way of stealing from the American citizen and the military. Halliburton is accused of hundreds of millions of dollars in improper charges. Pentagon auditors have found potential overcharges of $61 million. Now the numbers are apparently even larger than previously thought. Halliburton's unreasonable and unsupported bills exceed one billion dollars. If anybody's overcharging the government, uh, we expect them to repay that money. It's been proven so many times that Halliburton has overbilled them, and then the Pentagon still pays them anyway. I don't know who it is that is protecting Halliburton. I don't understand why the military would protect them. If you look at their board of directors, they've got contacts in the State Department, contacts in the military, People who work for Halliburton once worked for the military. When you hire top Pentagon officials, when the vice president is your former CEO, you're going to get the access that other people don't. It is reportedly not a coincidence that Vice President Dick Cheney's old company got a huge contract to help rebuild Iraq. Time Magazine said it has gotten a hold of a Pentagon email saying Cheney's office coordinated Halliburton's multi-billion dollar deal. All the revelations came out about Halliburton getting all these fancy no-bid contracts. There was not a single hearing in the Congress, House or Senate, about the mysterious bidding processes around Iraq and Halliburton. Um, that's ridiculous. The oversight responsibility belongs to the United States Congress. It belongs here, and it's not happening here. The Senate should spend a little less time advertising allegations of wrongdoing and spend more time talking about what is going right. If any 